All of the objects have their own history and stories of their own. I wanted to use them to create a new story, to birth a new life. I'm Laura Clark and this is Wunderkammer as part of CFPR's Methods of Making series. The Methods of Making exhibitions take place in the real cases found around UWE's Bauer Ashton campus and explore projects from the concept through to the finished project, a kind of show and tell about the adventure of creating a piece. When asked to take on this project, I wanted to use it as an opportunity to deconstruct a body of work I made called the Cadaver Room. The Cadaver Room was part of an exhibition I did a few years ago in an old Victorian butcher's shop which was due to be renovated in London. The works explored the human and animal bodies and how beauty can be found in the grotesque. In this exhibition, the prints and sculptures are shown, but the journey actually begins with the objects. So having the chance to show the work again in the real cases, it seemed incredibly important to be able to show this journey from object to print back to object again, displaying the artefacts that I collected that were so integral to the project, but overlooked in the first exhibition. When thinking about how to approach the in-store, I really like the idea of the work being presented in a museological way, behind the glass and untouchable. My brain conjured up images of wunderkammers or cabinets of curiosities, which commonly featured antiques or objects of natural history, like taxidermy or skeletons. Usually the objects displayed would have a very special significance. They would be rare, eclectic or esoteric. Viewers could gaze at the objects and imagine their historical connections, their stories. With the first real case, I wanted to show the objects exhibited in this way, objectified, glorified and under scrutiny. These objects and artefacts were my starting point in this project. They provided the imagery in the making of the prints and the altarpiece sculpture Exquisite Corpse. Objects like glass eyes, bull horns, a taxidermy cock, an old Victorian electrocution device, a porcelain doll, a sheep's skull, pigeon's feet. But this selection is only a small collection of the objects I actually used. Perishable objects are missing, for example, internal organs like placentas, hearts and tongues, as well as other body parts like breasts, penises, toes, fingers. These are missing for obvious reasons, but can be seen in the prints and the sculpture in the final real case. From the objects I have displayed, the viewer can get a glimpse of what might unfold in the coming real cases. These objects were chosen for their links to the body, to the abject, as defined by Julia Kristeva, and to their relation to what Mikhail Bakhtan calls the grotesque body. When seen as individual objects, they have their stories to tell, but one can only imagine the places they've been or the people they've affected. My aim was to bring all of these objects together to create one being, transforming them from object or subject to the abject. As Julia Kristeva puts it, abjection preserves what existed in the archaism of pre-objectal relationship, in the immemorial violence with which a body becomes separated from another body in order to be. I took inspiration from the surrealist game Exquisite Corpse, a collaborative drawing approach used by artists to create bizarre and intuitive images and created a net. In the second real case displayed is the research and designs that went into the making of the plates and their assembly to then create the sculpture. I wanted each image on each plate to fit together like a game of exquisite corpse, a tentacle meeting with a finger, a breast transforming into a heart or a foot with glass eyes, I researched many different archimedic shapes, shapes that would have enough facets for me to place the scans of the objects onto and that would allow me to further create a three-dimensional piece out of two-dimensional facets, shapes like isohedrons and dodecahedrons. The shape I chose in the end for this project was a cube octahedron, a shape made up of squares and triangles that when laid out to create a net of 14 facets and assembled together it created a beautifully structured spherical shape. In this real case, you can see the original workings out of the net and partly printed net of the facets that went on to make the sculpture. There is also a larger print of all 14 sides that I was unable to exhibit in this exhibition that I will show you here. 
This piece is called Unraveled Cadaver. The nets are important and interesting because they create an ordered dissection of the piece, laid out, unravelled and exposed. All prints, Maiden's project, come from the etched copper facets that then become the sculpture Exquisite Corpse, which we then find in the final real case. Spinning suspended just above the plinth, we find the altarpiece sculpture made from copper plates, a 14-sided sphere upon which the boundaries of each facet divide one body from the other at their points of intersection. I wanted to display the sculpture in this way to give it a feeling of weightlessness, creating a feeling of liminality as though it is suspended between worlds. As it rotates, we see one body as it offers its death, the other its birth, and in doing so, they are merged. As Bakhtan writes, each fragment belongs to those parts of the grotesque body in which it outgrows itself, transgressing its own body, in which it conceives a new, second body. The scanned objects on each facet merge with each other, dismembered parts, separate organs, gaping mouths devouring, digits grasping and constricting, tentacles sucking, dripping, leaking, Through the etching of the piece and the intimacy that comes with the process, I become part of the sculpture, and through the reflections given back to the viewer in the polished metal, they too temporarily become part of the exquisite corpse.